Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday night worship service here at Linden Baptist Church, where we'll join together in worship through song, through Bible study, and through prayer this evening. I hope that you enjoyed our time of fellowship, those that were able to attend our Zoom meeting for Wednesday night dinner, and we're going to continue that for a while. We're going to continue our Zoom meeting for Sunday Bible study as well for a while. So if you want to participate in our Sunday Bible study meeting, that's at 930 by way of Zoom. Just contact the office and we'll make sure you have that link. And the same um, on Wednesday night, if you want to participate in our worship um, and fellowship meal, that'll be at 530 and you can contact the office if you'd like to participate in that. Just a couple of other um, events that are coming up. On Friday, May the 29th, and Saturday, May the 30th, we have the Baptist World Alliance standing together at Pentecost, a global worship experience. Um, They say 47 million Baptists united together by the Holy Spirit. So if you want to participate in those worship opportunities, you can go to the Baptist World Alliance Facebook or YouTube page, and that's going to be Friday, May 29th at 8 p.m., or Saturday, May 30th at 2 p.m. And finally, we have a Bible study that will begin a week from tomorrow, a week from Thursday. That's going to be the Living in the Spirit Bible study on June the 4th. So if you'd like to participate in um, this Bible study, it'll be June the 4th, a Bible study and devotional focusing on living in the Spirit during this time of uh, after Pentecost that we'll be coming into. So this evening, let's uh, begin as we're in a season of Easter and we're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. We'll sing first tonight, He Lives, as we sing to our risen Savior.
walks with me and talks with me along my stairway. He lives, he lives, salvation through in part. You ask me how I know he lives, he I want to take time to share with you a report from our gathering of food for Olive Branch Ministries. I want to begin first by offering words of thanks that are expressed by Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. A big thank you came out to all CBF Kentucky churches for the delivery of supplies and resources to Eastern Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Bob Fox made the delivery and described his experience very well. So I'm just going to read from his words about the gift that we participated in. I'm pretty sure it looked a little ridiculous. Anyone passing me got quite an eyeful. A church bus, but only the driver on board. Where the passengers ought to be, there was toilet paper, Clorox, and canned food stacked halfway up the windows. You couldn't see the luggage compartment in the back that was also full to the brim. I look like I might have just put on my corona mask and robbed a Dollar General. I was on a roll for Scarlet. They started, started emptying on Tuesday. All right. The, I started empty on Tuesday and after stops at Faith Baptist Church, Living Faith Baptist Fellowship, Linden Baptist Church, Crescent Hill Baptist Church, Georgetown Baptist Church, and First Baptist Middlesboro, I was ready to go to Pine Knot Elementary. Did I mention we had so much to give? We had Brian Varble's help as he brought a van loaded with items from Calvary in Lexington. I also want to thank First Baptist Corbin for their good work in providing a staging area for our effort. At the school, we met Regina, the Family Resource Center coordinator, and started unloading. She shared with us that she was trying to keep 100 families fed. When clients arrive at her office, they had been passing out two rolls of toilet paper and 10 tied single packs of laundry detergent. She was so happy that she would be able to be much more generous and that her diminished stock was replenished. It doesn't end there. Numerous folks, including First Baptist Fort Thomas and other churches like Lexington Avenue Baptist, decided to send checks for Scarlet to be able to make strategic purposes. To date, they amount to over $1,500 given and pledged. It is amazing what CBF Kentucky can do when we are in the midst of a pande pandemic. Give God the glory at, for the good we can do as we follow Christ together. I'd like to just stop and have a prayer of thanks. But also a prayer for those who will be offering those gifts of food and supplies and those families who'll be receiving those food and supplies. So would you bow with me as we offer a prayer? Gracious Lord, even in the midst of such challenging times, 
Your spirit has moved among us in powerful ways. When we can't be together, we have been able to come together with our efforts, providing necessary food and resources. For the areas in Appalachia where people do not have access, we put, pray for Regina and Scarlett as they provide energy and direction to ministry in this area. We pray for these families who will be receiving food, who will be receiving what they need for basic supplies that this will have an impact on their quality of life, but even more importantly, that they will experience your love and your grace. <clears throat> May we continue as we lift our hearts and our voices in prayer. May we also continue to put feet in hands and dollars behind the work that is being done to continue to support and to make possible ministry to such a hard hit area in our country. We do pray for Regina and Scarlett and for their physical health as they provide ministry in this time, as they reach out into difficult regions into places in our own state where there is such need. We lift these petitions to you, offering our thanks, but also offering our petitions for your protection and your presence through the name of Jesus. Amen. We also, during this time, offer a prayer of intercession, a prayer a time of prayer when we bring into our minds those persons and among our own family and friends, our neighbors, faces of people that we see as we watch news and other reports about life across our world these days. Those who, have, who are experiencing, in addition to the pandemic, natural and other disasters. So we do come to a time of intercession and prayer for our world. So will you again bow with me and pray, lift in prayer those concerns that are on your heart and mind, thy voice of prayer for us. Our Father, we do come in this time, in these moments, in the quiet of these moments, that we would hear your word, that we would feel your presence, that we would be guided by your spirit. We are so aware of your presence with us and among us. And offer our praise and our thanks for all that you have done and all that you are doing in our world. For the blessings we have experienced today. And most of all, for the redeeming work of your Son in this world. We do come at this time also to lift our hearts for those who are in need. Those that we know personally, those that may be among our closest of family and friends, and those that we know of that you have put on our hearts to lift in prayer at this time. We 
commit ourselves to be your hands and your feet, even as we lift this prayer to you now. We pray especially for those whose work is for the benefit of others, the healthcare workers, the first responders, those whose jobs may be in the background but yet make life essential for all of us. Guide them and protect them. We know that there are many in our world who are not able to work today, for whom resources of food, resources to pay rent and cover other expenses are a challenge that seems so overwhelming. We pray that they would be able to reach out to get the assistance that they need, that your presence and your people would bring peace, but also resources that are so needed. Many in our world are facing illness, some from the virus and some from many other illnesses. Illnesses that we think of, that we would normally experience. We pray for your healing touch, and for the gentleness of caregivers as they provide touch. The number of grieving in our world grows each day. Those who've experienced loss through the death of a family member, through a friend, those who've experienced grief from the loss of a job, those who've experienced grief from the loss of the sense of safety, Be our ever-present comfort. Open our eyes to see those who need an extra portion of your loving care. Lord, in this day, we're also aware that across our country and across our world, there are far too many people who live with the reality of injustice, who live in fear for their lives. Guide, direct, protect those whose lives are upended by, a, by injustice. May we give voice where theirs is not available. May we stand with them in whatever way we are able. Lord, as your church, may we be your presence, your lighthouse. May we stand with courage. Strengthen our faith and inspire us to witness to all people. Accept these prayers, O Lord, in Jesus' name. And now give us the strength to patiently wait for your answer, to live faithfully in response to your call. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn be breathe on me breath of God. And as we believers in Christ are filled with the Holy Spirit and being molded and shaped more into the likeness of Christ, experiencing more fully the presence of God, um, we look to Christ's example and we see that even when he was isolated um, from his friends, he was welcoming and seeking out those who were lost. Even when Jesus was wounded, he was healing those who were 
sick and who are in need of a Savior. And even as Jesus suffered, he was serving. And so we today have many things that we suffer, whether it's injustice or loneliness or financial concerns or sickness. But can we look to God um, for a different kind of fulfillment as we walk through these sufferings and be able to serve and share God's gospel and the love of Jesus Christ in the midst of it? Let's pray for the help of the Holy Spirit as we sing, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. This coming Sunday is the day of Pentecost, uh, the day when we celebrate the uh, coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church uh, and, and the forming of the, the, the people of God, the, the disciples of Jesus Christ into uh, a missionary force uh, to share and spread the gospel of God and the presence of God uh, throughout all the world. Uh, one of the uh, uh, lectionary readings uh, for Pentecost Sunday, one of the, the, the scriptures that we uh, turn to out of the Revised Common Lectionary, uh, is found in the book of Numbers, and it's an unusual story. It's a very interesting story um, that concludes with um, the Spirit of God being given to 70 of the elders of, um, of Israel, uh, and Moses wishing that all the people of Israel could receive the Spirit um, but I want to back up in that story a bit before we get there uh, and just remind us of what it is that led to Moses wishing that all the people uh, of Israel would have the Spirit of God. Uh, the people of, of Israel uh, have been set free from slavery in Egypt and they've been wandering uh, throughout the wilderness. And, and as they've wandered, of course, they have to take the tent of the tabernacle down and then they have to put it back up. And sometimes they stay in one place for several days, and sometimes they only stay in one place for a day or two, maybe even a day. And so this movement being led by the, the, the fire and the, and the cloud of God's spirit and God's presence um, keeps them pretty active and pretty busy. 
uh, during this time. And, they, and you can imagine that, that these people uh, who, are, who are in a strange place, they're, they're in a wilderness, they're in a desert, they're, they're not living where they're used to living, they're not used to doing what they're used to do, and, and the environment in which they are uh, has been totally changed, and, and they've been complaining. Um, in fact, they've almost been complaining from the day they left Egypt, uh, but they've been complaining, and this, the passage in, in Numbers uh, chapter 11 uh, begins with uh, a record that God uh, has gotten so uh, aggravated with the, the people of Israel uh, that the fire of the Lord burned against them and consumed some of the outlying parts of the camp. Uh, and so the people cry out to Moses, and Moses prays to God, uh, and the fire uh, comes to an end. Uh, and the place was called uh, Tibera uh, because of the fire of the Lord uh, had burned against them in their complaining. Uh, but of course, the complaining doesn't stop. Uh, and in the fourth chapter of num- uh, the fourth uh, verse of Numbers chapter 11, um, the writer of the scripture says, "The rabble among them had a strong craving." And the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. Remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing? The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic? But now our strength is dried up, and look, there's nothing at all but this manna to look at. I found those, those verses uh, both humorous and sad. Because here God has led people out of slavery. Uh, God has led them out of captivity. And God is leading them toward a promised land, a land where they can settle. A a land that, as we learn from the spies, is a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, It's a a lush land, a, a lavish land. It's a place where people can make their homes and their lives because God has promised it to them. But to get from Egypt to the promised land, the people of God had to wander through the wilderness for a while. They had to go through a strange time and a strange land. And even though they are headed towards uh, something that is far better than what they left, even though they're headed towards something that uh, is is different in, in terms of them being free to set their own agenda, Um, they're still having to go through this kind of wilderness experience, this strange time. And of course, when we're in strange times and when we're in strange places, uh, one of the things that we sometimes tend to do is complain that this is not what we're used to. Uh, This is not like back home. It's not like last month. It's not like last year. We complain because between where we've been and where we're going, we sometimes have to face difficulty, struggle, maybe not having everything that we hope to have or everything that we did have. And you can always count on the fact that there's going to be a certain group of people who are always going to be stirring the pot. And it's interesting that that the, the writer of Numbers says that it was the rabble among them. It wasn't a big group of people. It was just people who were rabble rousers, people who were, who were stirring the pot, who were complaining, and, and they got everybody all worked up. Uh, that's kind of the way of it, isn't it? Uh, sometimes it doesn't take many people to, to get everybody all worked up. And, and, and the, the thing I find interesting about what they were complaining about is that they said, gee, all we've got is this manna this food that God has provided them in the wilderness. Oh, if we could just go back and and eat the fish that we ate in Egypt for nothing. Do do you hear the silliness of that? Oh, we could go back and eat the onions and the cucumbers and the leeks and the fish that were given to us for nothing except slave labor. Except the inability to live in safety in their own homes. You remember that it was in slavery that Pharaoh had decided that every child under the age of two, every boy under the age of two was going to be killed. Slavery was a horrible time, but because people wanted to be able to eat what they wanted to eat, and, and they wanted to have what they wanted to have, and they wanted to have it right now, 
They didn't want to wait for it. They, they didn't want to, to be in the place where God promised to provide it all. They wanted it right now in the wilderness. They were even willing to go back to slavery to eat fish. Um, the story goes on and, and says that when Moses heard all this carrying on, all these people weeping for the lost fish and the lost cucumbers of Egypt, <laughs> Moses gets really angry. Uh, but, but his anger is not necessarily directed at the people. He's probably gotten used to that by now. But his anger gets directed at God. And, and God turns, uh, Moses turns to God and says, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised an oath to their ancestors? Where am I going to get meat to give all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. And I'm not able to carry all this people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you're going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me, and do not let me see my misery. Uh, Moses has, in a sense, kind of had it up to here. Um, and, and he's had it up to here not only with the people's complaining, uh, but he's also had it up to here with the burden that he feels of having to carry this alone. That the feel, he feels like this is all on his shoulders to try to move these people from where they were in their slavery to where God wants them to be in their freedom. And he feels like he has to do this all by himself. And God in his grace responds to Moses. And God says to Moses, I want you to call the 70 elders of the people together. And I want you to bring them to the tent of meeting, to the tabernacle that, that was built. And so Moses calls together 70 elders from all the tribes of the people of Israel. And they meet together in the tent of meeting. And, and the, the scripture tells us that, that when they were there, that God gave a portion of the spirit that God had given to Moses to these 70 elders. So the grace of God acted to, to, to spread the burden of the leadership of these people um, beyond Moses. And, and the spirit of God uh, that, that Moses had been blessed with to lead these people now is given to 70 other people to help carry out and lead the people from uh, slavery to freedom uh, through the wilderness. And, and, and God um, offers this spirit to, to 70 elders. But then wouldn't you know it? Um, something doesn't quite go right. Um, the scripture tells us that two of the men didn't come out to the tent of meeting. They remained in the camp. One was named Eldad and the other was Medad. And the spirit rested on them as well. Um, they were among the, those registered, but they had not gone to the tent. And so they prophesied. They spoke the word of the Lord. They carried the message of God in the camp. And so this young man goes running up to Moses. And he, and he says, Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. In other words, they weren't part of the group that gathered in the tent of meeting. They stayed back in the camp. But you'll notice the scripture says the Spirit of God fell on them. And they began to speak the word of God. They began to encourage the people to follow the way of God and to listen to the voice of God. And Moses responds to Joshua are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit in them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Mo Moses longed for a day when people would, instead of following their own wills, their own yearnings, their own self-interest, their own desires, Moses yearned for a day when people would, 
would stop listening to the voice of their wants uh, and their hungers and would listen to the voice of God. So now you have these 70 elders with Moses who are, who are hearing the voice of God and speaking the word of God. But Moses said, I wish that all the people of God lived that way and lived their lives in tune with the will and the purposes and the spirit of God. And rather than speaking the complaints that grow out of their own selfish desires and, and wants, rather than griping and complaining about what they don't have, that they would be willing to live their lives in complete obedience to God in their midst. Now on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God falls on the church. And Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians that each of us who are part of the church have been given a manifestation of that Spirit. What Moses longed for on the day of Pentecost was made a reality in the life of the church. So each of us who are a part of the body of Christ have a manifestation of the Spirit. And, and the question that comes to us is, what do we do with that manifestation of the one Spirit of God that has been given to each one of us? Are we just going to set it aside and still pursue our own self-interest, our own desires? Or are we going to let that Spirit of God direct our thinking and our acting, our speech, our compassion, our empathy, and our sense of our solidarity? with the victims of hunger and poverty and injustice and racism, with the victims uh, of, of oppression, with those who are sick and those who are in prison. Moses said, oh, that all the people of God would have the Spirit of God. Paul reminds us, we have the Spirit. Let us live by the Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn this evening will be Day by Day. A hymn that reminds us that God will be with us, that God can sustain us to do His work and His will. So let's sing together day by day and with each passing moment. Day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to find my trials here, trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for Amen. Yeah.
And now as you face this evening and the night's rest, may you live into the loving, embracing arms of God and find your rest and strength in him. Amen and amen.